Hi, this is Kim Shanley for Tennis Reach. Today we're going to start on our third major lesson in the Federer Forehand Paradigm Series. I borrowed the title for today's lesson, Hitting with the Body, from an old martial arts story, really, where the martial arts master told the student, you know, don't hit with the hand, hit with the body. And what he really meant was, there's really no such thing in hand striking in karate. There's the hand integrated with the body striking. And it's the same thing that we have in all hitting sports. We should be hitting with our body, not with our hand or with our arm, uh, and especially in tennis. And that's what we're going to explore today. Before we analyze how we connect the hitting arm to the body in tennis, I want to take a quick look at how they do it in baseball and golf. Again, tennis reaches about digging into these universal athletic dynamics of great athletes in other sports, getting a deeper understanding, and then applying what we learn to tennis technique. Here we have Derek Jeter in a typical baseball batting stance. Jeter was a Hall of Fame shortstop for the New York Yankees and five-time world champion with the Yankees before retiring. What we see here is the equivalent of a tennis neutral setup with both arms and hands raised and the right hitting elbow extending far from the body. We see this extended hitting elbow away from the body in baseball, golf, and tennis. The purpose of this extension is to prepare for the pulling of the elbow into the right hip and torso in the real loading phase of the stroke. In the next photo, we see Jeter in the moment before contact with the baseball. By tucking in his right hitting elbow, Jeter is able to build energy into his right hitting leg and then drive forward and rotate his hitting side and finally his arms into the contact zone. In all sports, moving the arms closer to the body speeds the rotation of the core of the body. Think of an ice skater who is spinning slowly with her arms outstretched and then pulling both arms close to her body to spin much faster. The same principle is at work here. We also see the lagging bat with Jeter's body prepared for a leverage hit on the ball. Here we're looking at the hitting sequence of an amateur golfer, so don't be overly critical of his form. In the first slide to the left, you see nearly at the identical high elbow position away from the body that we saw with Derek Jeter. Then in the next slide, you see the elbow tucking into the body quite dramatically as the player loads his right leg and torso. In the third slide, you see the moment after contact with the left hip extending out and the right hip pulling through, and the elbow stays connected to the body throughout the hit. This is hitting with the body, not just the arms. The next photo is of an old-time golfer, student Ma Stuart Maiden, who is the golf teacher of Bobby Jones, one of the game's greatest golfers, renowned for his beautiful swing. We see the same elbow tuck to connect the arm with the body as we saw in the other photos. In passing, Note that Stewart's legs and lower body are not as dynamic as we saw with the current day amateur golfer and certainly not as dynamic as modern golf professionals. We can say the same thing about the past modern tennis pros, that the legs and lower body are much more dynamic today than they were quite a long time ago. Now, of course, we're back to tennis looking at Roger Federer's initial setup. Again, we have the right hitting elbow extended far from the body, and we see the body fairly erect, much like we saw Derek Jeter in his batting stance. In the next photo, when Federer has split his hands and dropped the racket back into the pat the dog position with the racket facing down to the court, we see even the greater extension of the elbow from the body. As Roger enters this true loading phase of the stroke, we see his body sink into a lowered athletic stance and his front side bend forward from the waist towards the hitting zone. We see the same lowering and tilting of the body in baseball and golf in this loading phase. This enables the athlete to make a much more dynamic rotation of the body into the hit than a straight up and down stance. Uh, the straight up and down stance is a poor habit that so many players really never overcome. In tennis, we call this loading the power pocket. The power pocket is the integrated loading of the hitting arm, hip, and leg. 
Sinking of the body drives the energy into the leg, which will drive forward, up, and around during the hitting phase. This athletic sinking of the body and the forward tilt of the spine also compress energy into the right hitting arm and hip, which will be released in the uncoiling of the hit. As we see Roger load the power pocket, we see him driving his right foot and leg forward and tucking his elbow closer to the body, connecting and integrating the arm with the body. In the last photo in this sequence, we see Roger in a very dynamic position prior to contact. We see the loading is now in the hitting forearm as well. Roger has set the spring with his body and arm, and will, he'll now release the spring into contact. I want to go back now and compare Federer's load mechanics with that of Derek Jeter, just so we can drive home these principles of loading and unloading. You can see almost the identical leg loading and drive into contact with Jeter and Federer. You can also see, which we'll talk about later, this unloading of the hitting side against a stabilized non-hitting side. There's complexity here that we can't discuss right at the moment. But you can clearly see that the non-hitting foot and leg planted and braced to help the hitting side rotate more quickly and for the arm to swing the bat or racket more quickly through contact. In this action, we have the dynamic of the whip, a very fast unspringing action, as well as the leveraged bracing of the arms, body, and legs to transfer all the rotating energy of the core of the body into the hit. In baseball, the player is usually trying to hit the baseball as hard as he can and hopefully knock it out of the ballpark. In tennis, we need power to drive the ball quickly to the other side of the court, but we also need much greater control of the spin direction and placement of the ball than in baseball. So in tennis, the stroking action is much more nuanced than baseball, which is more of a raw collision with the ball. In tennis, we want a controlled hit, a leveraged whip action. So what happens if we don't hit with the body and we don't connect the hitting arm with the body? Here we see the opening sequence of a Daniela Hantrakova forehand. Daniela, as you can see by her former number four world ranking, was a top player. However, her back end was always Daniela's better and more reliable shot. And a few of these weaknesses in her forehand technique, I believe, are the reason for the weaker forehand execution. Daniela starts off in a very similar manner as Roger Federer's take back. Right hitting elbow is far away from the body. She takes the right back with two hands. But you can see in the very next photo how quickly Daniela immediately moves the elbow closer to her body. With Federer, we see the elbow continues to extend as he splits his hands. Daniela appears to be rushing her setup, and this will disrupt, disrupt the sequential steps necessary to build energy into the power pocket and to release it. In the next photo, we see Daniela releasing her racket from a very high slot position and forcefully swinging the racket in a circular forward manner. In contrast, you can see that Federer is compressing the power pocket and transferring energy to the non-hitting side, but he's waiting to swing the racket. Again, we want to wait as long as possible to swing the racket around and forward into contact. This creates the last second whip effect that we're looking for. In the next photo, we see that Daniela is sweeping, starting to sweep around the ball at contact. This is an outside in racket path, which brings the racket square to the ball prematurely at contact, which tends to close off the racket face and smother or pull the shot. Overall, Daniela's stroke here is a good example of simply arming the ball. The hitting arm is not connected with the body there is no real development of the power pocket, and the release into contact is with a sweeping outside-in racket path. As usual, we covered a lot of material in this lesson, so let's take the summary takeaway points and see if we can improve your game with some focused practice.
We have six techniques we're trying to learn today, and I recommend that you assign 10 drop hits to each technique, just focusing on one thing at a time. And we'll start all of these drop hits from this two-handed take back position that we saw with Federer and the other players we looked at. And so from the moment this splits, <coughs> and I'm rather in a wrecked position, the first one is the tucking of starting up high with the elbow apart, but then moving that down as we come into sync into our stroke. So we want to take this in sequence, just like Federer. We don't want to start out here and then bring it in close like we saw Hanchakova. So first 10 balls are simply working on the process of dropping this ball and getting this arm tucked in to our power pocket so that we can start to just feel that elbow turning in, that sort of pivoting of the outside of the elbow in, and then with the racket going out at 45 degrees and then a hit. We don't want to try to hit too hard. We're just mostly working on this uh, rhythm and this technique of bringing in the arm, bringing it out, and then bringing it through. Now the next 10 ball drop hit should be focused on this idea of going from this sort of fairly erect batting stance that we saw with Jeter and Federer, you know, down to the more athletic squatting position, they sometimes call it, uh, or athletic foundation, where your weight and your muscles are really activated in your thighs and your hips. And so we're just practicing sinking, practicing sinking and then rising up. The next 10 drop hits are working on this idea of once we drop and we start to push forward into this stabilized zone that we're going to talk about in more detail in other lessons, but it's a push and a drive off this foot and the foot usually has, you know, an edge to it like we saw with Federer because we're driving off this. So work on 10 that might look like this. Next, we want to work on the technique of, and we did this before, of this inside out swing path. We don't want a sweeping outside in swing path. This is going to close off the face of the racket prematurely and smother the ball. So we need to come at the ball and contact should be with the racket lagging, the hand rotated down like 45 degrees. And then in your final 10 drop hits, we wanna to try to think about putting all these together. And remember, we wanna do these things slowly with deliberation and awareness. We wanna to try to check out the feels. Did I, did I get that rise? Did I get the timing of that right? You wanna to start to educate your body and, and really ingrain these feels into your strokes. So the last 10 are just trying to put it all together and seeing if the measurement there is, am I hitting with my body or am I hitting with my arm? And you're the only one who really can tell that. So yeah, after each one, you want to stop and analyze, okay, was that a body hit? And if not, why not? So perhaps it looks like this or something like this. So we're right back here again, and we're going to sink and do everything all at once. Bracing against and straightening this left side driving into it, uh, you know, that felt sort of medium in terms of whether it was hit with the arm or the body. I can do a lot better than that, but I'm fairly rusty out here at this moment. And just for the fun of it, here's me in slow motion doing this drop hit. I can see several things wrong with this rusty forehand, including not enough lag in the racket. 
but here it is. The main points to look at are you coming from the slot to the side of your hip and body, which I am. Is the racket lagging, which it is, not enough, but lagging. Uh, and as you initiate contact, is the hand rotated around 45 degrees, which looks about right here. And four, is your body leveraged against the stabilized front side. But I'm not about to leave you with the last images of this lesson with me as your model. No, the real model in all Tennis Reach videos are the pros with the best technique. And here, once again, are the final summary points of this lesson, looking at one of the great forehands of all time. From Roger Federer. And remember, do what Roger does. Hit with a body, not with a hand.